Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. Synthesizers, as digested by a classical musician. Just kidding. That's also not quite what I'm getting at. I want to know how synthesized sounds can enhance, augment, and at times stand in place of traditional acoustic sounds in the context of contemporary music. Wow. There's so many ways you could dial this If you in. turn up the resonance really high, you oh, hear this I like... See the thing. Coming from a classical music background, I've been less exposed to digital sounds until quite recently, so much of this exploration deals with familiarizing myself with different types of synthesizers and how different types of sounds are created. The instrument I'm working on is the CP88, and full disclaimer here, it was sent to me by Yamaha when I moved to New York City recently, and for now, it's the only keyboard I have to work on, so naturally the instrument itself started influencing things I was writing. Good morning. So, I am ready to work. Mm. Later on, you'll hear how I turned this little musical like idea this. into this final piece. But first, I want to share with you the process I went through with the help of some of my friends to open my eyes and ears to new types of instruments and synthesized sounds. Oh, I like how it... It's just kind of... Dissolves. It, it fizzles. Let's see where this goes. <laughs> my friend James Kahn showed me some vintage synthesizers. It's like, it's like having a pipe organ, but from the future. While hanging out with my friend Adam Neely, we experimented with an analog synthesizer. So there's a little bit of noise here. I kind of like the noise. Just. And my friend Andrew Huang Hi. showed me a bunch of things about <laughs> modular synthesizers. Right. Yeah, so 47% of the time it's going to skip mm -hmm. actually sending out the trigger. It's a five beat cycle. Four of the beats are possible. But 47% of the time, it will not send one of those beats. Got it. Got it. <laughs> These experiences all shaped a new understanding and appreciation I have of timbre, texture, and rhythm in relation to sound design. And then pitch is like, <laughs> like a hilarious vibrato. <laughs> to be an... Oh. <laughs> I can express myself finally. <laughs> this is this is the sound that you want. That's a guitar patch that doesn't sound like guitar. Oh. You can keep it on that sound. I'm gonna just real briefly. I'm gonna connect the subwoofer. I like this kind of t -t 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 sound. like that that like um, clipping. Mm -hmm. Normally, like. I try and avoid that. Avoid that, but it kind of it's kind of cool in this context. So this is the uh, oh the super low end. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, it's that that sub bass is like it's like those cars that go by and you're like oh okay, <laughs> but then I can do that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can play that, but and then you see there's nothing below it. And what are those other speakers? Oh, this is, this is the noise noise floor. So if you're just, it, it will always have that. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me gate that so we don't have that noise floor. Oh, I like the sound. So it's kind of like just more of a sine wave. But that sound right there works really well with the sub. This is the way we could do it. We could have the random voltages generated at the same rate as these kick drum rhythms. Mm -hmm apply it to a parameter, so if we apply it to the pitch of that, every time there's a kick drum, it changes the note of the kick drum. I really like that. It's not regular. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I don't like the sound, but I like the... How it looks. What I find uh, is newer relative to the whole, you know, history of music is an appreciation for timbre that's now possible when we're able to create so many new ones electronically. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. And then I 
to get bored of it. <laughs> okay, I get it. Got it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> So I did learn quite a bit about the different types of waveforms and how different types of effects are employed using synthesizers, but the main takeaway for me could be summed up with these words. Dial to taste, like how much you want that thing. Dial to taste. Yeah. I feel like that is what describes synthesizers. <laughs> There's ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release. And that's how you make sounds. Mm -hmm. So that's when the sound stops. If you have a, it up there, it's gonna keep going un, until you shut the machine off. So that's the saw triangle square. Okay. They're just like that's that's like the building blocks of each one of these. There are so many different types of synthesizers that work in so many different ways, but I've gathered that they are all tools for basically the same thing. The ability to design and craft a specific sound to portray a specific color, emotion, and atmosphere with your musical ideas. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's so high, we might want to tune those down. No, I don't know. The quality of the noise is really interesting, I find. I like that. I, that, that type of sound. Oh, I've never even got it to do this before. Like it's really it. kind of like broken feeling. Yeah. Again, as somebody who is not trained in mm -hmm. any of this, just trying to get by, it feels like it's a lot more about how you design the sound of a note mm -hmm. rather than how you design the patterns yeah. of notes. Because the patterns of notes could be very simple, right. but the design of that one note could be very complicated. Oh, that's interesting. All of these things fed into how I wanted to form my piece, and after coming up with that initial idea, I did a loose improvisation session around it and ended up transcribing a portion of it to get my composition going. some good ideas, some very questionable ones. I also had a visual reference that I personally used to map out the types of rhythmic and harmonic progressions I imagined for the piece, and this is what that looked like. So similar to how some of these smaller lines kind of sprout out of areas like this or here. Basically, the staggered and irregular nature of the lines represents the irregularity of the rhythmic patterns I use, as well as how I want the harmony to move at times. A lot of this had to do with the influence I got from hearing irregular patterns generated on the modular synthesizers when I was hanging out with Andrew. While writing my piece, I was very much influenced by the prospects of being able to design a sound catered to each type of idea I had and layering different sounds that were available to me. I took my time in finding what types of combinations I wanted for each section and quite frankly, after a bunch of experimentation, I found that using a small amount of extra sounds worked the best, rather than excessively using the options available. So I like how this setting sounds with something like a perfect fifth. Without, just adds a little bit of a, almost like a halo over these notes, so. I 
thought that was cool. If you compare that with... It's a lot more interesting. For this sound, I find that layering it with the piano is actually a lot more interesting than hearing it by itself. This sounds, I don't know, not great to me. But with the piano, I just like that combination. Of course, I could also see the pros and cons of using an acoustic piano versus a keyboard and inevitably did some comparisons. You know, I actually quite like these transitions on the piano. I can play really soft and to play soft comfortably requires the piano. I think as keyboard players, it's always a good thing to be able to adjust to different keyboards, different types of pianos really fast because that's just the nature of the reality for us. Do you find this easier to fire off at the fingers? Like, do you uh, feel no, you can no, play? No, 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 no. You prefer the weight? Yeah, I know. Sure. Rather fight the weight? And you're not fighting. It just it's um, you're in touch with the keys when you're when there's weight. Okay. And it's almost like you're riding the resistance, whereas with this, it feels like you're kind of skating on something nice. sli <laughs> slippery. This keyboard, this particular one, is quite heavy compared to other ones. It's weighted and there is organic material. There's wood in between the keys, which really makes a difference. But still, there's something about the type of resistance here that is not familiar to me and quite different from an acoustic instrument. The solution there is just to practice. I found that just spending time with this keyboard, I was able to feel a lot more comfortable with those differences. And what else? I think that's it. Another huge thank you to James, Adam, and Andrew for helping me out, and to Yamaha for supplying me with the keyboard. Now, here's the final piece.
I hope this video gave you all some ideas for your own musical explorations, and thank you so much for watching. Looking at this, I feel like my life is together. <laughs> <laughs>so this is the type of sound I don't like. Like the 80s, uh -huh. like, yeah, that sort of thing. Sorry, <laughs> right, you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> what do I do? Hold on. That's what I want. Okay.